Hi there and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Now today we finally carry on with some further scenic modelling around the branch line station area and it's kind of well overdue and if it wasn't for such things as the Binley Mega Chippy model disrupting my schedule then it's been work and a whole bunch of other stuff as well that has taken up my time. So the plan is really to make some form of progress in this area and try and get a little further ahead. So it's quite a lengthy video so make sure you grab yourself a cup of tea or a coffee or whatever takes your fancy, settle in and see what's been happening on the station road layout. So there's quite a bit to achieve in this area and I'd really like to make a good solid dent in the scenics and finishing things off probably from this point through to sort of here really the town scene and the street scene that's another project really but just to rattle off what is needed here finishing off this industrial area I really want to bed this down create some weeds around here do a little bit more weathering to the cobblestones when we get to this point here I've got some little bits of leftover fence which I want to pop in here which was from the Binley Mega Chippy model that I recently built then we've got these embankments that need scenic treatments and finishing off these lower retaining walls in here there's also some finishing off to do with the station building as well and I'd really like to be able to get into this area here and actually build this little bit of hillside up that's going to wrap around and come out across these tunnel portals here so we've also got weathering to do on this retaining wall here and sort of finishing off this little component here that I built possibly a month back and weathering these tunnel portals. So I think to start with what I'm going to work on is this area here and finish this off. This is more or less complete here. The plan is I'm going to anchor this factory to this upper base level which will also in turn be anchored to the back scene as well at the same time because this whole section will be a lift out section. So once I've done that we can look at the scenic treatments to these embankments and I'll do these at the same time so that we've got a little bit of continuity in terms of overgrowth, bushes, grass cover and things like that. So there's a lot to do so let's just crack into it. So I've taken the industrial building off and I've just beforehand marked out a rough line where the building footprint is because I didn't really want to get any more weathering powder on the building itself so I'm just sort of going to do a light dusting around these edges here that sort of beds it in and give it a blast over here with the fixative spray just to anchor in this because I haven't actually sprayed any of this area down here which is just slightly off the camera So once again I'm just using ground up chalk pastels and we're just going to give this a bit of a light dusting around these edges because it kind of helps really to make it look like the building is nested into the cobblestones. I'll also be adding some more weeds around the bottom edge of the building as well.
sachet. And then I'd just actually use a simple razor to, if I wanted to sort of peel back certain areas and create a little bit of tonal difference, even if there was sort of scratches or road markings of any sort. This is a door here, so maybe there's some gouges in the cobblestones that create that effect and possibly even the same up here So I think that should do it. We'll just check with the building and just see how it looks. Uh, we've got some wires poking out, but that doesn't really matter at the moment. So yeah, it already sort of makes a big difference having these sort of areas around here that help sort of nest the building in. So we're going to give this a blast with some clear matte spray and I think I'm probably actually going to cover up the back seam because I don't really need to have the spray over that because if I do then I'll have to spray the whole back seam which I don't really want to do because this is really nice and matte. So the matte clear spray is now dry and it'll be a case of anchoring this into place. Now the reason I'm doing that is really then this becomes one single unit that can be lifted on and off the layout. So there's some small holes down here which I'm going to feed the wires through because there's a little bit of lighting in this building and I'm just simply going to glue it in place with PVA glue. So see how it goes. So while we've got the weathering powders out, uh, I might as well weather up these retaining walls as well, plus these tunnel entrances.
So these are now weathered up and behind the scenes I've been over these with a matte clear varnish just to seal everything in. So now we can actually get on to doing the first of the base layers of scenic material on here and what I usually use and I've used this in previous applications is Woodland Scenics blended turf and then also I've got a kind of a scrap bin which is a mixture of soil and some other turf materials which have been excess from previous projects so I'll be scattering some of that so the idea is I don't want to have a uniform base layer on here sort of want to make it patchy so the theory is that in certain places where the static grass is thinner you'll see some of this showing through so just using the standard old PVA glue for this one and spread with a brush and I'll sift the stuff on so we get a nice sort of even spread. So we'll start with this one here. Now, as I've mentioned before, it's great being able to work the layout or construct the layout in such a way that these components can be taken off and scenic materials applied off the layout. So you don't really have to worry about too much mess or scenic material getting, to, getting into other parts of the layout. Now somebody did actually mention in a previous video that they didn't have the luxury of doing this because of course they had installed most of their scenic structures permanently onto the layout and then of course obviously the scenic material has to be applied in situ and yeah I, I'm guessing you know a lot of people model in that way and they'd have to mask off areas of the layout so that they didn't end up getting glue or static materials in areas where they didn't belong. But I've taken this approach because it just means that we can work these components separately. And the other beauty too is that here at the moment it's the middle of winter We've had some very cold days, although today it is roughly about 22 degrees here in the garage, so it's quite good to do it in here, but if it was too cold, I would take this into the office and work on it in there instead. So we'll start with this Woodland Scenics Earth Blend and we'll give it a good scattering in that area there I think and then we're going to do a wee patch of a more sort of dead material I guess that you might call this and back to this and there we have it like it's pretty simple and we're just going to let that dry I might sort of pad this down a little bit so that we get these materials really sticking into the glue so we'll just sort of quickly press it in just very lightly and then of course having this separate we can shake quite a bit of that material off and set that aside and then of course I can collect all of this up 
and reuse it. And of course this pile here now will end up in our scrap bin. Now there is actually beyond this point where it connects to some hill structure that is actually fixed to the baseboard so that I will have to do in situ on the baseboard and we'll move on to that after we've completed this. Now there's a bit of a gap running around here at the top but that's not to worry about. Uh, this That'll be where overgrowth and bushes and so forth will be applied. Right, so that's the second section done. We'll just press this down as well. And there we go, there's our ground cover completed. Right, so this is this little wee small piece that's actually anchored to the baseboard. So we'll give this a wee scattering as well. Now obviously in this area we'll just have to hoover up the excess. So with the base scatter now complete and we're actually now into day two this has been given a good opportunity to dry out and I've just quickly put this back into place just to see how it's looking and also actually just simply to compare how it was before I actually began so as you can see the weathering 
it's all complete around here and what I've actually done is I've done a little bit of further weathering to the base of the station building so we've got these sort of faint soot marks coming up the wall of the building and also a little bit of grime and filth running around the actual base of the station itself so another aspect that I've also completed is the stone capping on the walls here and then I've also done a little bit of light sort of weathering to these lower retaining walls. So I guess you can also actually see from this vantage point where the industrial area sits in behind there of course where our street scene has been lifted up so you can get a good idea of how the track actually works underneath here. So the next step that we're going to move on to now will be applying the first sort of series of static grasses and then also sort of overgrowth and that type of thing. So we'll start with this embankment first which is the one that leads up to the industrial area. So the plan really is to not completely cover this in static grass so up at this end where the station is, is where I really want it to be quite overgrown with brambles and bushes and things like that. Maybe a little bit of thinning out up at the top edge where the other retaining wall is and another sort of cluster of brambles and things down at this end and then possibly quite a overgrowth of brambles along the bottom edge so the impression I'm trying to achieve is a very unkept embankment that's been left to run its own course. So for the base scatters I'll be using some watered down Mod Podge which is in here and then I have a selection of static grasses. I may not use all of these static grasses but it's just a case of sort of seeing how it goes. So I'm going to start down this end and I'm actually just going to use more of a short static grass and this is a straw pico static grass. Now I've not had much luck with this in the past this static grass but we'll see how it goes. I really sort of want to try and persevere with it if I can and use this stuff up but essentially this is going up at this end and then of course there's going to be bushes and brambles on top or around the edges so a reasonable amount of this may actually well be covered up in the end. The issue I've had with this particular brand of static grass, the Pico static grass, is that it's notorious for clumping into balls and it just keeps seem to doing it so it sort of has to be busted up. If I don't have any luck with this grass I will give up on it and move on to something else. Now I've actually gone over this base scatter with a spray fixative so this watered down Mod Podge shouldn't really affect the scatter underneath. And once again having these components separate is proving itself handy so that I can actually just simply move these around to suit. I have to say that this particular aspect of modelling I do actually find quite challenging and it's not really so much the actual technique or the application side of it it's more actually trying to work out where things should go so that they look reasonably realistic and no matter how much I look at photographs or videos and what other modelers have actually done I still actually find it quite challenging so 
so I'm just using the precision applicator because I do actually find this a lot better for control and so forth the only disadvantage and I've commented on this before is that the cord for the actual applicator piece this here is just far too short it's a design flaw that I'm kind of hoping that maybe World War Scenics because although it says Pico on here it is actually a World War Scenics device that they may have actually decided to make the cord on this a bit longer because unfortunately you sort of have to drag this box around with it although I have a funny feeling they may have actually changed this or upgraded their precision applicator to a different type of device I always sort of feel like when I'm doing the static grass application I kind of feel like I'm always in a hurry because I sort of worry that the glue that you spread down is going to dry before you've actually had a chance to fill the applicator and unfortunately the precision applicator although you get the accuracy you have to fill the reservoir frequently So we're sort of getting a reasonable amount of grass coming out of this applicator with the Pico static grass. It just sort of takes a little bit more work. It really doesn't just flow as nicely as some of the grasses do. So I think in this footage I'll either speed it up or we'll jump forward a bit as we progress with this. Uh, it's one of the other things too that I have to consider is you can't pack the reservoir too much or otherwise it just simply won't come out. Right, let's move on to a different grass. Now, unfortunately I don't have a label on this one like I normally do on some of these other ones. So I actually don't know what brand this is, but I think it's possibly six mil. It's quite a nice blend this one. And of course it doesn't clump like the Pico grass does. And I'll just be doing this in some very select areas. I sort of want to have some longer grass up at this top edge because there's going to be less foliage and brambles up at the top edge. I kind of feel like up against this retaining wall where the industrial area is. So I think that's enough for the first layer of static grass. Once this is dry I'll just be going over some additional smaller areas with further static grass and I'm going to try another different method because I seem to always like experimenting and that is to use a matte spray varnish to apply additional layers of static grass and just see how that goes. So I'll move on now to the other embankment and get that first layer of static grass down. So you probably noticed a change in scenery today, pardon the pun, but I'm doing this in the office because it's about five or six degrees outside and 
that's about 10 degrees in the garage so I can bung the heater on in here in the office and we can get it up to a decent temperature that the static grass material will dry right so we'll leave it there for the first layer of static grass on the other embankment and as I mentioned before what we'll do is wait for this to dry and then we'll go over with a second layer of other static grass materials so I'm applying the second layer of static grass and I'm using quite a mixture of blends here and different lengths of grass as well and I'm doing it quite patchy so we get some quite random areas where some of the grass is dead other areas are a little bit more lush and of course there's also areas where I'm not putting any static grass at all with the plan of brambles and bushes going in those areas so I'm experimenting with another type of layering glue I've sort of used all sorts in the past uh, some matte medium watered down mod podge watered down PVA watered down and using a atomizer spray bottle but I thought I'd give this particular product a go which I discovered from Gormo at Chesterford Junction Great Chesterford Junction who uses this matte clear spray for some of his buildings and sealing and weathering effects so it's acid free so I'm kind of thinking it would be reasonably safe now you've probably seen I've once again moved and I'm back in the garage because it's now warmed up in here it's 24 degrees in here I have had the heater on and it's a beautiful sunny day out there and I didn't want to be using this stuff in the office so yeah this came from Bunnings here in New Zealand I think you can also you can get it at Bunnings in Australia as well so we're just going to see how this goes but it certainly seems to be doing what it should be doing and we'll let this dry before we do any further treatments which of course include the brambles and things like that So what I've been working on just here is the base for sort of brambles, gorse and more dense sort of overgrowth and what I actually use and it's really simple is this felting wool which you can just tease and pull apart it does actually come in a varying number of colours and I just pick it up from the local craft shop so this is just basically to get the structure of the bushes and brambles which is roughly sort of glued into place and then once that's sort of dry a little bit then it's a case of going over it with some clear spray and I might use the same spray that I use for the static grass and sprinkling over various different scatters and yeah it looks reasonably effective so I'm not completely covering 
the areas but I'm sort of placing it where I sort of think maybe this kind of stuff is going to kind of be out of control and get rather bushy now once this section obviously is anchored in place which it will be anchored in place on the baseboard then I can carry on the scenic so we've got the merge between these two sections of embankment and get a seamless join there so I did this method on the scenic section of the fiddle yard on the embankment there and it came out with reasonably good effect and of course the other great thing too is that when you initially glue it down you don't need to be too worried about stray bits poking out because before you put the scatter on just a pair of scissors and you can trim it to however you want it to be shaped and I'm just gluing this material in place with dabs of PVA glue all it needs to be is enough just to hold it in place because once you actually go over this with a clear spray and put on the scatter and that that helps to almost kind of solidify it and it becomes really quite solid The edge of this one here on this side of the platform I actually really want the brambles to pretty much run along the entire length of the lower retaining wall so it kind of almost actually will end up hanging over the edge of the retaining wall So we'll let these dry a little bit and then we'll come back and add some scatter to the top of them. So what I'm using here is a blend of two knock scatters. So I've got this one here and unfortunately I don't think it's in English it's a sort of a brown scatter and then there's a sort of a, a green blend scatter possibly sort of forest green and I've actually blended these together so that you sort of end up getting some highlights in it and just using the spray that I use for the static grass And just concentrating the spray on the actual bramble material here and it's sort of creating quite a nice effect of some serious overgrowth So that's our brambles in place and I'll be probably adding in just some other random sort of bushes which I'll dig out from my scenic supplies and place these in here as well. So we've made a bit of progress and at this point I think I will call it a day for this particular episode otherwise it's just going to get horrendously too long but as you can see we've added in a few sort of more tree-like bushes or overgrowth through here and tucked away in the corner up here we've now got this little bit of wooden fence and completed the end of the retaining wall there so these sections here are now anchored in place and that section there I've still yet to join the embankment onto 
this upper industrial area so once that's done then this whole piece will actually lift out so looking back at where it started off it's certainly coming together I think reasonably well there's still a lot more to do in terms of finishing off like I want to add in some kind of flower or blossom type scatters and of course at some point some ballasting I can probably actually start thinking about that for this particular area because I know now that I'm happy with the track work and once I've come to that conclusion then I sort of feel confident about ballasting it so I didn't quite make it to this area here where I, where I was sort of hoping to get this hill formation continuing on so that we shall do in the next episode and as part of that there's also a kit bashed Metcalf building that I've yet to actually start on which is going to go in this corner here at the end of the factory and some more kit bash buildings around here and we can really start to actually work through the town and street scene and get that finished so there we have it quite a monster video for this episode but it really does sort of cover quite a number of modeling techniques and as you probably saw in the video there was some speeded up footage but I also just kept some footage at actual speed because I have had a few comments from folk in the past who said that they would really like to be able to see some of this at actual speed rather than me racing through something and potentially missing an important process so as I mentioned earlier I think the next step will be getting on to the actual town area up above and the street scene and of course completing that sort of upper hill section that will actually go over the top of the two tunnel entrances so I think rather than making this video any longer than it already is I think it's definitely time for me to sign off so do take care everyone look after yourselves don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time bye for now